the North Atlantic winter of the year 1000. Waves, the height of city buildings, crash against a wooden longship, its hull groaning under the weight of ice. The wind slices through wool and skin alike so cold it burns. Frost clings to every rope, every shield, every beard. Breath turns instantly to crystal in the air. The world is nothing but steel grey water and sky, and in between a handful of men in an open boat, there are no cabins here, no walls, no fire, only ice wind and endless cold. For weeks the crew faces this frozen hell, sleeping in the open soaked by salt spray, with nothing between them and death but their courage. To the modern mind it seems impossible. We depend on heat to live. Without shelter, without warmth, a human being would die in hours. So how did they survive? How did the Vikings cross the most brutal waters on earth without fire to warm their bodies or cook their food? The answer isn't what you think. It's not ignorance or luck or blind endurance. It's engineering, cold, deliberate and brilliant. The Vikings didn't simply face the cold. They mastered it. Every rope, every sail, every stitch of clothing was part of a system designed for survival. They built ships not for comfort, but for conquest vessels that could outlast storms, outrun enemies, and outthink nature itself. The truth behind their voyages will completely change the way you see them. This isn't a story about men suffering against the odds. It's a story about how human ingenuity turned the impossible into strategy, how a people without fire learned to command the frozen seas. This is where the legend of the Vikings truly begins. When we search for the truth about how Vikings survived without fire, we begin not with myths or sagas, but with what the earth itself has preserved. Across eight major excavation sites, Roskilde Fjord, Oseberg, Gokstad, Gjellestad, Hedeby, York, Greenland, and even Newfoundland archaeologists have uncovered the remains of Viking ships that once ruled the northern seas. And in every one of them, they found the same haunting absence. No hearths, no braziers, no ash, no trace of fire at all. At Roskilde Fjord in Denmark, five ships known as the Skuldelev fleet were raised from the seabed after lying hidden for nearly a thousand years. These vessels ranged from sleek warships to heavy cargo traders. Inside, researchers found tool chests, water barrels, weapons, even remnants of preserved food, but nothing that could have produced heat. Not a single iron pan or firestone not a single burn mark. The same pattern repeated at Gokstad, a royal ship burial from around the year 890. The ship contained large water storage systems and sleeping areas for its crew, but again, not a hint of a cooking place. At Oseberg, a stunning burial ship from 834 excavators found bronze cauldrons and cooking pots, but these were purely ceremonial, placed with the dead as symbols of the afterlife never used on the sea. Fast forward to the 21st century when modern technology joined the investigation. Ground penetrating radar surveys at Gjellestad in Norway between 2020 and 2021 revealed an enormous Viking ship buried intact beneath farmland. High resolution scans detected metal fittings, ballast stones, and structural timbers. But once again, no thermal residue, no hearth remains, no evidence of controlled fire. The conclusion is impossible to ignore. Across all ship types, warships, traders and fishing boats, Vikings never built systems for heating or cooking on board. Yet on land, the story is very different. Excavations at Torxey in England uncovered a vast winter base, covering more than 50 hectares, filled with hearths, forges, cooking pits and workshops. These were the places where crews rested, repaired their ships, cooked and ate. The evidence is clear. Vikings prepared their meals and warmed themselves on shore, not at sea. And there was a reason for that. Viking ships were floating tinder boxes. Built of pine and oak, sealed with tar and animal hair, lashed together with ropes, soaked in pine pitch. Every plank was flammable. A single spark could spell disaster. Modern fire simulations on replica longships prove it. Once a blaze begins, a Viking vessel could be engulfed in flames in less than four minutes. Archaeologists have even found grim confirmation of this danger. The ship known as Hedeby One was discovered in a burned state, likely destroyed by fire during battle. Its charred remains stand as silent testimony to what happened when flame met tar and timber. 
This was not primitive fear or lack of knowledge. It was calculated engineering, a deliberate choice to eliminate the greatest threat at sea. For the Vikings, refusing to use fire wasn't a sign of weakness. It was the secret of survival. If fire was too dangerous to bring on board, then warmth had to come from somewhere else. For the Vikings, that warmth didn't come from flame, it came from fabric. From the fibers they wove, the layers they built, and the discipline that kept them alive. Archaeological finds from Herjolfsnes, a Viking settlement in Greenland, reveal one of the most advanced clothing systems of the medieval world. When researchers uncovered graves frozen beneath permafrost, they found garments that looked almost modern in their complexity. Coats, hoods, tunics and leggings, all made from layered wool and linen. These weren't crude furs thrown over the shoulder. They were engineered survival systems, built to trap heat and manage moisture in ways few materials today can match. The secret was wool, not just any wool, but carefully graded fibers spun for specific purposes. Viking weavers understood that coarse wool blocked wind, while finer wool retained body heat. And wool, unlike most materials, keeps insulating even when it's wet. They took this natural advantage even further. Before every voyage, crews waterproofed their clothing by rubbing it with a mixture of beeswax and animal fat. This coating repelled seawater and salt spray, keeping the outer layers dry for days. Over time, the garments stiffened into protective shells against the wind, forming what modern researchers call a portable microclimate, a tiny self-contained world of warmth surrounding the body. Beneath the outer shell of sealskin or bare fur lay two inner layers. The first linen wicked away sweat and moisture. The second dense wool trapped heat near the skin. Over that came the treated outer layer seal or wolf hide slick and windproof. Each layer had a role, and together they created an armor of warmth that moved with the sailor wherever he went. Every morning on the open sea began with a ritual. Before the day's rowing or navigation, crew members checked each other's sleeves and seams. Using bone needles and wax thread, they tightened every wrist and collar, sealing them against the wind. It wasn't fashion. It was survival. Women on board, often skilled in sewing, would reseal men's sleeves with quick practice stitches. The waxed thread hardened in the cold, forming a near airtight bond between cloth and skin. Later, before battle or landing, warriors would cut the stitches with their CX knives, freeing their arms in seconds. The ritual repeated every dawn, a quiet act of cooperation that literally kept them alive. This daily discipline transformed clothing into technology. The Vikings didn't need cabins or heaters because their garments were their cabins. Layer by layer, they built warmth around their bodies, creating insulation so efficient that it could keep them alive in freezing seas where others would perish in hours. Modern experimental voyages have proven the system works. In 2007, during the Sea Stallion expedition from Roskilde to Dublin, a crew of volunteers sailed a reconstructed Skoldelev ship using historically accurate clothing. For two weeks, they faced freezing rain and North Sea winds, yet their body temperatures remained stable without any fire or shelter. Their survival wasn't just proof of good design. It was a testament to discipline to generations who learned that the line between life and death could be drawn with a needle and thread. The Vikings didn't light fires to stay warm. They carried their warmth with them. They sewed it into every stitch, every sleeve, every sail. They didn't need fire, because they had already learned how to create heat from their own hands. But even the finest clothing could only do so much. Wool could hold warmth while they worked and rode, but during the long frozen nights, when movement stopped and silence settled over the sea, something more was needed. Fire was forbidden. So the Vikings found warmth in the only source left to them each other. The sagas tell us of a system that was as intimate as it was ingenious. In the Eagles saga, the Landnamabok and the Prose Edda, there are references to what were called waterproof skin bags, the Hudfat. These were not simple blankets, but sleeping bags made of sheepskin and lined with fur large enough for two people. Two bodies inside one insulated shell could raise the temperature by 15 to 20 degrees above the outside air, enough to mean the difference between life and death. Night aboard a Viking ship was not a time of rest, so much as a ritual of survival crews were divided into watch rotations. 
When one sailor climbed from the sleeping bag to take his turn at the helm, his partner slipped into the space he left behind, still warm from the first man's body. The heat was never allowed to fade completely. The sleeping area itself became a living system, a rhythm of bodies and breath, sustaining each other through the cold. Archaeological reconstructions of longships show how this worked in practice. The crew didn't sleep on the damp hull bottom, but on raised wooden planks built above the bilge, where air stayed slightly warmer. The sail, when lowered at night, was stretched across the top of the ship, forming a great tent that trapped the warmth from dozens of breathing men. Inside this cocoon of fabric and fur, the air grew thick and heavy, but it stayed warm. There were no ranks at night, no separate quarters for the commander. Even the ship's leader shared the same space, the same breath, the same heat. On these open boats, hierarchy dissolved beneath the need for survival. Every man's warmth was everyone's safety. Modern physiology helps explain why these methods worked so well. When people share confined warmth and physical closeness, the body releases hormones that reduce stress and improve circulation, a process scientists call psychological thermogenesis. In simple terms, morale creates heat. Hope, trust and companionship literally help the body resist cold. The Vikings didn't know the science, but they understood the truth of it. They practiced it every night. To outsiders, it might sound primitive, but for them, it was sacred, an unspoken pact between shipmates. In the absence of fire, they built their own warmth out of loyalty and discipline. When dawn came, frost still clung to the ropes and armor. But beneath the sail, a dozen men would stir, stretch and rise alive because they had shared what little warmth they had left. The Vikings didn't survive alone. They survived together. They replaced the fire with faith and turned trust into heat. Even with warmth and shelter, crafted from wool and willpower, the human body needs more than insulation to survive. It needs fuel constant calories to keep the heart beating and the muscles moving through endless cold. But with no fire at sea, how did the Vikings eat? How did they feed a crew for weeks without cooking a single meal? Archaeology provides the answers. Excavations at Hedeby in northern Germany and at York in England reveal the remains of Viking trading posts packed with food storage jars, fish bones and hardened bread. These discoveries paint a picture not of desperation but of astonishing preparation. The Vikings had mastered a diet built entirely around preservation. Before every voyage, crews loaded barrels of dried cod herring and salmon fish cured by salt and wind until it was nearly unbreakable. They carried hard bread, known as ship's biscuit, baked dense and dry, so it could last for months, and nut loaves packed with fat for energy. They stored fermented dairy, sour cheese and butter, preserved in animal skins alongside sacks of oats and barley, for what they called cold porridge paste. This thick mixture of grain, butter and salt could be eaten straight or mixed with cold seawater. It was dense, nutritious and surprisingly effective, providing two to 3,000 calories a day, enough to keep a sailor alive in freezing conditions. Nothing was cooked, nothing was warmed, every meal was cold, but everything was designed for endurance. At sea, each crewman had a ration bag and a shared water barrel. Meal times were simple, almost mechanical. A sailor would cut off a piece of fish, soften it in water, and chew slowly while another man steered the ship. There was no smoke, no flame, just the rhythm of chewing and rowing the steady heartbeat of survival. Yet behind that apparent simplicity was one of the most sophisticated logistics networks of the medieval world. Recent coastal surveys have mapped more than 200 Viking shoreline stations, stretching from Norway to Newfoundland, a chain of supply bases spanning the North Atlantic. These were the hidden arteries of Viking expansion. Small harbours, storage huts and seasonal camps that allowed fleets to rest, resupply and repair. The largest of these was the Torxy Camp in eastern England, a winter base covering over 55 hectares. Excavations revealed stone hearths, iron cooking tripods, forges and family quarters proof that Vikings did all their cooking and repairing on land. The sea was for movement, not for comfort. Onshore, they ate hot food, repaired sails and readied themselves for the next crossing. Offshore, they relied entirely on preparation. Imagine the route they followed, a living map drawn in courage. 
From the fjords of Norway ships crossed to Iceland's black beaches, then to Greenland's icy bays, and finally westward to the rocky coasts of Newfoundland. At each stop, a new supply point, a warm fire, a repaired hull. Every link in that chain was built by hand, maintained by faith, and powered by pure human endurance. The Vikings weren't just sailors, they were operators of a global system, a cold water supply network that functioned without metal engines, without charts, without fire. They didn't simply row ships, they managed an empire of motion, a world connected not by trade routes or technology, but by muscle memory and the will to keep moving forward across an ocean that wanted them dead. They didn't just survive the cold, they built a civilization around it. Across the seas they conquered the Vikings weren't alone. Other civilizations also faced the challenge of sailing, but they made very different choices. In the warm waters of the Mediterranean, Roman and Byzantine engineers built ships equipped with bronze braziers and charcoal stoves. Their galleys carried small kitchens and chimneys that vented smoke through the deck. Fire was a tool they could afford to use. Their seas were calm, their ships heavier, and the risk of a spark was low. But that comfort came with a cost, slower vessels, weaker speed, and limited range. The Vikings chose the opposite path. In the North Atlantic, there was no forgiveness. One flame could destroy an entire fleet, so they abandoned fire altogether. In doing so, they gained something far greater, speed, safety, and control. They built lighter ships, faster ships, ships that could slice through ice and storm alike. They traded comfort for capability heat for mastery. They didn't lack technology, they redefined it. Their designs were not mistakes of ignorance, but triumphs of adaptation. Every stitch of wool, every plank of oak, every meal of cold fish was a part of a larger system, a fusion of engineering discipline and survival instinct that outthought the environment itself. While others relied on warmth, the Vikings learned how to create it within. They turned the cold from an enemy into an ally. They didn't need to heat their ships because they had learned to heat themselves. That choice to reject comfort for endurance to trade safety for strength changed history. With that philosophy, they reached Greenland and North America 500 years before Columbus. They carved trade routes from the Arctic to the Middle East, and through it all, they never once lit a fire on the sea. Today, when winter wind cuts through our jackets, when we instinctively reach for the heater or the phone or the soft light of a screen, remember this. The Vikings faced the same cold, and they met it not with complaint but with design, with teamwork, with will. Their legacy is not just in the long ships they built, but in the lesson they left behind. That survival is not about resisting nature, but understanding it. That the greatest warmth comes not from flame, but from purpose. The Vikings didn't simply endure the cold. They transcended it. And in doing so, they proved something timeless, that the fire within us can burn brighter than any flame.